Welcome to a new vlog. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Unity UTI 260B professional thermal camera. As you may know, I used to own a FLIR 1 iOS thermal camera that I was using with my phone. It was working okay, it had the thermal resolution of well, I don't know, like 90 by 120 or something like that and the picture uh, resolution uh, of about 2 megapixels because it had two cameras and it was doing the um, overlay thing, the MSX technology they're calling it. Well, one day I dropped that camera which uh, caused a fault in the lightning connector and unfortunately FLIR does not sell replacements for that connector even though it seems to be a uh, common a problem with those cameras. So I started searching for a new camera. I was thinking of getting another FLIR 1, but then I discovered this Unity camera, which I believe is a uh, fairly new model and not a lot of people know about it. But let me tell you the specs of this. Uh, the thermal camera resolution is 256 by 192 pixels. The visible spectrum resolution is 640 by 480. And, uh, and it can also mix the two images similar to how the FLIR does it. It has a 2.8 inch TFT LCD, a 5000 mAh battery which gives a battery life of at least 6 hours, a temperature range for the measurement of minus 15 up to plus 550 degrees Celsius. It has this rugged design with IP65 protection. Uh, you get a uh, micro SD card slot for uh, image storage and up to four points of uh, temperature measurement on screen. And this, let me tell you, is a massive upgrade for me over the FLIR camera I used to have. And you can get all of this for just around 320 up to 380 US dollars, depending if you use a coupon code or not. And by the way, this unit was provided for free by Banggood.com for the purpose of this review. Now, let me tell you that even if you pay the full $380, this is a killer deal in terms of bang per buck, because if you look at the alternatives, there is nothing remotely close in specs and quality for the same price. Here is a comparison sheet with some FLIR cameras and their thermal resolution is usually much smaller, even in the $1,000 range of products. They do seem to offer higher resolution in the uh, visible image, uh, but that will not help a lot, at least not with my workflow. The UT260B clearly has the best thermal resolution for the price. In terms of packaging, the unit is very well protected inside this rigid box and there is this uh, very thick foam cutout. So I would say that, that the camera is very well protected during shipping. Uh, there's nothing that can happen to the camera. Inside the box, you get this uh, long uh, USB-C cable. Uh, you also get a generic 16 gigabytes micro SD card uh, and this uh, paperwork. There is no carry case or protection pouch included, but stick around till the end and I'll show you a, uh, a protective pouch that I will use for this camera. The associated PC software can be downloaded from the Unitrend website. In terms of physical construction, this feels really, really solid and high quality. It's a rugged design with IP65 rating. It has a 2 meter drop rating. Uh, the uh, handle on this thing feels pretty ergonomic and there is a uh, tripod mount in here and these um, uh, red parts are of uh, some form of rubber. So I, I would really trust this to survive a casual drop from the workbench. Uh, then there are these uh, recessed areas to protect the LCD and uh, also on the front to protect the sensor area. And then the, uh, there is the silicon cap for the connection area, uh, which seems to make a very good uh, seal with the case. The LCD has a good brightness. Uh, I still have the protection film on this. I want to keep it uh, in there until I receive a uh, protection film I've ordered to protect the LCD from scratches. I've set it to maximum brightness and it's clearly visible in the bright lights I use for shooting videos. The uh, buttons have a uh, nice uh, feel with positive clicking action when pressed. 
um, but I find they're a bit too close together for my taste especially for navigating the uh, menu is pretty easy to hit the arrow key and the set key at the same time especially if you have thicker fingers this camera uses a UFPA sensor which stands for uncooled focal plane array and I believe this is the same type of sensor you see in uh, all the entry-level FLIR cameras however this is not a chip made by FLIR China is making their own sensors for a while and the company which makes uh, the sensors in China and the actual sensor used in this camera is made by iRay the uh, battery life on this thing is uh, five hours minimum uh, or was it six I don't remember exactly but I think that's an accurate rating because I've been using this for uh, more than two uh, hours testing it and it, it barely dropped a uh, bar on the battery indicator and this uses a 5000 milliamp hour battery internally non-user serviceable but it's a lithium 25 560 cell uh, here is one for size reference uh, I believe it's it's located inside the handle so if you really need to service it you probably have to remove some of the protective rubber uh, or, or some stickers to uh, access the screws and open the uh, camera and like any other uh, product coming out of China this has a built-in flashlight feature it's pretty useless if you ask me because of the rather low output but who knows maybe you are inspecting something in a dark basement maybe it will come in handy but in that case you would probably have a decent flashlight with you anyway now if we move into the uh, software and functionality aspects of this camera one thing that's going to be slightly annoying is the uh, rather slow boot time of this camera it takes about 30 seconds uh, from start to finish until the, the camera becomes operational but I've been told other professional cameras do that as well they might be running some OS on their internal processor so I don't think you're losing anything here with the Unity I think uh, most other thermal cameras behave the same way there is this uh, PC connectivity app provided by Unity and you can connect the camera with the supplied USB-C cable and you can opt for USB disk connectivity for saving the SD card files or a webcam function which enables you to use their software for monitoring purposes and you can have this camera set for example to monitor the entrance to a building and it will automatically sound an alarm if a person's temperature exceeds a preset temperature and you could also probably adjust that functionality for monitoring a particular uh, you know technical circuit and sound the alarm if the temperature is exceeded in terms of languages there is only English and Chinese available and you can switch between degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit from the settings menu you can set some high and low alerts you can adjust the emissivity and the measuring distance among other settings the firmware version on my unit is version 1.1.6 and at the time of uh, publishing this clip I don't think there is an update available at least not publicly I've done some uh, searching on the subject I couldn't find anything you have the option of choosing between two temperature scales and this helps improve the range you see in the image as well as the measurement accuracy and you can go for a high gain option which is minus 15 up to plus 150 degrees Celsius in this setting the camera will amplify the sensor with a higher gain and there's also the low gain option for the 150 to 550 degrees Celsius range and you would use this to measure higher temperatures if you use this for electronics you'll probably keep it on the high gain setting one issue that all of these uh, budget uh, cameras have including the more expensive multi thousand dollar flares is the fixed focus and this is not ideal for electronics workbench use because we typically want to get in close to the PCB and inspect a particularly small component however given the higher resolution of this thermal sensor you can still get uh, quite a decent image with this camera uh, here is for example an image I took at about uh, 10 centimeters height above a board and we can clearly see uh, where the uh, hotspot is on that particular uh, component and another issue that these uh, budget cameras have is the misalignment between the visible spectrum camera and the thermal camera this is a softer parameter because the software running on the camera mixes the two images 
and you do get a uh, parameter you can adjust for this uh, setting it's under the uh, image settings menu and you can adjust it but the minimum adjustment is for half a meter now ideally for the electronics use you want to be able to adjust this even lower and this setting uh, was managed in a better way on my old flare one and i remember being able to set this option with a slider and i was able to get images into alignment even at uh, very small distances like 10 15 centimeters i will actually send an email to unity and kindly ask them to uh, maybe adjust this uh, in a future firmware update so we're able to adjust for uh, a lower than a half a meter distance but to be honest i don't expect to hear back from them anytime soon it's probably something i'll have to live to, uh, live with on the plus side the higher thermal resolution does help uh, but you can see if we look at the soldering iron clearly the the thermal image is not lined up with the uh, uh, visible image of the soldering iron and if I move further away they start to come into alignment because I get close to that half a meter point where the setting is something that I wasn't able to do with my old FLIR camera is to have multiple measuring spots and this camera has quite a few options the basic one is to do a center spot measurement point but it can also do high and low measurements uh, it can identify those points on the image and you can combine these and still have a center spot measurement on or there's a third option uh, you have a region of interest and it will search for the high spot in that rectangle Additionally, you have up to three measurement points that you can manually position in the frame. So it's pretty versatile in terms of measurement points. These features will sure come in handy for measuring multiple points on a circuit board, for example. While you are in the fusion image mode, by pressing the left or right arrow keys, you can adjust the percentage of uh, thermal image mixed on the screen in 25% increments. And I think this is also quite a useful feature to have. And if you uh, want to capture an image, you just need to hit the trigger switch on the handle and you will have to confirm you want to save that picture. And this requires two additional clicks um, i find this annoying i think this extra step uh, is not needed this could be like a menu option to stop asking you for confirmation and save directly to sd cards because what's the worst that it could happen if you press this accidentally you'll capture an image it, it's not a big deal one thing that i'm definitely missing is the ability to capture video on this camera i used to have this option on my third camera and it was good for measuring temperature evolution over time i could track for example how long does it take for my circuit to reach a certain temperature unfortunately with the unity you are only capable of capturing still images and i'm trying to understand why they decided to do it this way i'm pretty sure they would have wanted to have this capability but maybe they couldn't do it reliably at technical level maybe the processor wasn't capable of doing it but then you don't have this capability in their pc app either so uh, it works the same way still image capture only and if you try to open the camera device um, under a, a different app it doesn't work you get an error it seems like they, they don't want us to use this for capturing video they don't want us to use a different app so to me it seems like they're blocking this feature uh, by all means and now to give you my final thoughts on this unit here is just a quick comparison between an image i grabbed a while ago with my flare one which was a 80 by 60 pixel thermal sensor and next to it is an image of the same object taken with the new unity with its large thermal sensor there is quite a bit more detail in the image when we have the benefit of the higher pixel count sensor on the unity and if you're looking for that advantage of the high pixel count uh, to get that extra detail in the thermal image then there is nothing on the market for the same cost as the unity and the choice is pretty simple in this case but you also have to be aware of the limitations uh, i've mentioned like the fact that you cannot capture video on the unity and the alignment of the uh, two images at close distance it's not really possible 
there's also the the quality or warranty factor to consider and don't get don't get me wrong the unit is built really really well and the one i got is just flawless but i'm pretty sure that the quality control at unity is not as good as it is with FLIR, and uh, you can pretty much say the same about customer service so there have been reports of people getting this camera and having these uh, spots visible on the image and apparently these are caused by uh, specks of dust present internally on the thermal sensor and it's not an easy job to just open the sensor and clean it up you'll most likely damage something in the process so i would recommend you order one of these up from a trusted source and you pay with paypal just in case there are quality issues warranty issues you are covered by paypal and you can get a refund also because of the global pandemic you might run into stock issues and you might have trouble finding one of these in stock thermal sensors are in high demand and uh, it will probably continue to be this way for at least uh, the uh, rest of this year and combine this with the global chip shortage that's going that's going on right now and these babies don't stay in stock for long so if you want one and you see it in stock on banggood i would recommend you use the coupon code and order it asap uh, personally i had to wait for two months to get this unit so there are certainly uh, some stock problems and even if it shows up as in stock on on banggood it might be the case that it's not really in stock and they're waiting for a delivery from unity and like i mentioned in the beginning uh, i'm going to show you a soft bag that i plan to use it's this one um, it's kind of designed for carrying camera gear lenses stuff like that so it's it's soft on the inside and the uh, camera fits just nicely inside of this soft bag I'm not worried about impact or drop protection because the camera is pretty rugged but uh, I would like to protect it from scratches on the LCD or the sensor lens so this soft bag will help with that I can just throw it in my backpack now and not worry about it I will be placing a link to this in the description below so you can check it out of course it's not ideal it's not an EVA hard carry shell uh, but I couldn't find one of those with the size of the camera that was all for today don't forget you can support this channel on patreon with as little as one dollar per month and i would really love to hear what you think about this camera let me know in the comments if you know a better alternative that's available for the same price range with uh, equal or better specs thank you for watching and i will see you next time